So check out this shirt, Aquashella Chicago 2019. It was awesome. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at it. The best part about the show, by far, without question, was getting to meet you. If you had an opportunity to stop by, thank you so much. That is my absolute favorite part, is getting to meet the people who watch our videos, who support us. If you haven't been to Aquashella, I would highly recommend check it out. They're going to be in Dallas in the spring and hopefully back in Chicago next year. If you've never been to one of these things before, the, the videos, the camera just doesn't do it justice. It's really exciting to be around a bunch of other fish nerds. How often do you get to be around a big group of people, thousands of people, who all share the same interests? So in this video, we're going to check it out, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, so this is Aquashella. This is right after you get out of the front counter, you walk down the hall, you enter the Amazon room. There's a few display tanks here, a pond, and it's really striking, and the camera does a horrible job of picking up on the essence of what is this room. It was just packed full of visual uh, representations of fish and wildlife, but in a very unique way. You can see the lights coming down from the ceiling, all the black light utilization. I'll take a closer look at some of these tanks here in a moment, but it was just a really cool thing. And what I really like about Aquashella is they always do something different when it comes to the shock value when you enter. This is a large display tank in that Amazon room, which I thought was really cool. It had regular neons on the bottom. There's black neons at the top. I had a difficult time picking up the black neon, so we're gonna focus on these ones here. This was a large tank, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 gallons. It was a relatively tall tank. What's interesting about this tank is the lighting. It's relatively dim, and I think it would probably better reflect what's actually going on in nature. So these fish were, were pretty comfortable in their surroundings, and it just had a really cool, almost mysterious look to it, and it just it hits you right as you walk into that room. It's a giant tank, you can't miss it. Now the next one is also kind of interesting, and for a lot of you, I, I know that maybe glowfish are not your thing, these genetically modified fish, but it was a very striking thing when you walk into the room, and I haven't really seen glowfish lit up quite like this. This was a pretty large tank. I don't know the exact size, probably somewhere around 75 to 100 gallons. And there are quite a few of these fish and we're picking up a lot of the reflections here in the background. But again, in real life, the camera does a poor job of picking up on the, the fluorescence that these fish are showing under black light, but it was really just a really popped, interesting tank. I'm not sure I would ever do it, uh, at, for a home tank, but it was pretty cool. This was the third tank that was in the Amazon room. It was a discus tank. This tank actually had, it was almost like three tanks silicone together and like almost like the, sh the shape of a Z. This is what you see when you walk in after the Amazon room and you're ready to enter the, the main area. Uh, they had laser lights at the top and every once in a while there would be these things that just kind of billow out smoke and it would really play with the lights at the, at the top as you can see here pretty cool feature. I got a little bit of footage before everybody walked in, but it was usually so packed. I had a very difficult time getting footage of the entire place, but this is the freshwater side. Uh, one of the things we did at the booth is we gave away this giant tank as part of a raffle, which was cool. And we also had lots of activities. The bug eating contest was really kind of interesting. Uh, here there's also art at Aquashella. There was a lot of art. And so that's kind of a cool thing where it's fish, it's fish art, wildlife kind of things. And again, I don't show a lot of it here because I really do want to focus on the tanks and we're going to do that now. But there is some really cool art. And this is the current USA tank. I like this tank. It's, it was really cool at Dallas. It's typically one of my favorite setups. It's always a little bit different. Now, again, the, the lighting in the back, I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. Is this a tank that you would be interested in when it comes to like a home aquarium? I found it rather soothing to look at. I don't have any tanks with a background that is illuminated, but it was fairly interesting. Uh, again, it, sure, it's going to take away a little bit of the natural feel, but it, it is certainly a, a pretty cool concept. It was packed full of barbs. You see a lot of tiger barbs here, and it was really just quite, kind of striking. They did a good job of mixing the substrate and the hardscaping with the background and the fish. Uh, the fish had a lot of nice action, which was pretty cool. Aquashell is an awesome place if you haven't had a chance to go there yet. Uh, they had it in Chicago this fall. They often, or they started having it in the spring in Dallas uh, this past year, and it's going to be coming up again. It's definitely worth the trip. 
if you can drive out or even fly out, there were people from all over the United States that I got to meet. And that was one of my favorite things about this, this Aquashella is being able to meet you. Uh, that's, that's definitely the reason why I'm there. It's the, I think the reason why a lot of the people who are on YouTube are there. It was the most exciting part of the trip, but obviously the tanks are really cool. It's nice seeing the vendors and what the latest things they have. And there were a lot, there was a lot more fresh water than there had been previously. I know for us freshwater people, that was one of the things that we wanted to see more of. And easily half this show was freshwater display tanks and vendors. And there were people there selling fish. And I'll show you more of that in a moment. But it was, it was really cool as a freshwater person to see. And so here's another display tank that I thought was kind of interesting. A nice use of wood. And you can see all the plants and everything. It was just, I had a lot going on. I really liked it. Here's another one coming up. And again, this was a smaller tank. It was a taller tank. I just thought it was interesting. Kind of wish there would have been some livestock, a little bit more livestock in some of these display tanks. Uh, this was a pretty cool tank. I like the simplicity of it. And so you can see it's just Daniels. And often we see Daniels as this really simple beginner fish. Uh, you know, maybe a lot of us don't have interest anymore. We've kind of moved beyond the Daniel. Uh, I, I don't think so. I think when you look at this tank, you can see how well they work together. I like that lighter background. It's not something I've done. And quite frankly, I worry a little bit about the long-term maintenance of a tank like this. Just the algae that would accumulate and the aging of a tank, which can re look really cool when it's natural looking. But with a scape like this, it, I think it looks best when it's pristine, when it's first set up. But it was a really cool concept because of the simplicity. You've just got this one piece of wood and some Anubias tied to it and Daniels. But it really shows off what a tank can be in keeping it simple. The other display that they had there was a little bit more complex. So we've got more plants, we've got more wood. It was a darker feel with darker substrate, darker background. I wish the fish would have been out a little bit more because they were pretty cool. There were some cherry barbs in here as well. Uh, nice looking fish. They were just a little bit shy. Would have been nice to see maybe some cichlids, some small nano cichlids kind of roaming around the bottom, but really cool tank. Uh, this, this was my favorite tank by far at the at Aquashella this year in Chicago. I don't know what it was about this tank. I just loved everything about it. This was a tank that was right across from the fish tube booth. It was it was a display tank for Aquarium Adventure, which is a local pet store. And I naturally gravitate towards the dark gravel and the dark background anyway. And I'm sure that's probably part of the reason why I like it. But I, I just really enjoyed the, the scape of it. I don't know the exact size of this tank. It looked to be about an 80 gallon. It looked to have the same dimensions as our 50 gallon low boys that we have in our fish room, but a little bit taller. It was a rimless tank. And I really liked the use of rocks and driftwood and plants. And the driftwood and some of the plants actually extended above the surface of the tank, which is just an awesome look. And of course, we've got the fish. And we can see here, we've got a number of different type of apistos in this tank. We've got some McMasteri, some Borelii, some uh, Cockatoides Double Reds, and we also had some Fire Reds in here. Now, long term, this would probably not be something I would want to do just because I wouldn't want to risk hybridization. But at least as a display, it looked really cool. Definitely my favorite tank of the entire Aquashella. Would love to hear from you. What was your favorite tank? What was the best thing that you saw, uh, at least in this video? Again, here we've got a couple of Aquascape tanks here. I always like these. I like the sand waterfalls. I find them to be interesting. There were a couple fish in this tank, which I thought was cool. I thought it was a good, good selection for this tank. This next one here, this was the Seagrass display tank. It was their fresh water. Lots and lots and lots of tetras. They didn't tend to school. I mean, they, they school tightly, but they didn't tend to have that kind of like what you see with the neons where they're kind of going around and they're schooling in the same direction, but it was still kind of cool. But I like this. this. These were the other fish in the tank, the angel fish. And they kind of tend to hang out a little bit mid water and upper water. At least that's where they were in this tank. But it was kind of an interesting combination. I like the tank. Not the biggest fan of the circular tank per se, but it was pretty cool. I like this as well. This was probably one of my favorite tanks as well with the rainbows and the rasboras. Just a nicely done tank. Here we've got, you know, this is something I've been interested in for a while. Maybe put some frogs up in the upper half and then we can see down here we've got some guppies and it's kind of got this dark, almost black water feel to it. Pretty interesting. Uh, I spent some time here looking at this. It, it's definitely something I would love to consider doing. And of course they had the flower horn competition 
what do you think about these? You know, they've got these great big Nuco humps and some of them were absolutely ridiculous in terms of how big the Nuco hump was. I do find them interesting. I, I find them pretty, at least in terms of the color patterns. I personally am just not a huge fan of the giant Nuco hump. I don't, ma I don't mind it necessarily, but I'm also not a fan. I, I personally would love to see a fish like this, colored up like this, but without that big giant hump on its head. But you cannot argue the fact that these fish have incredible personality. They always seem to know when somebody's in the room. They interact with people quite well. Check this out. Look at the size of this nuchal hump. I'm surprised this fish can even get off the bottom of the tank. And he's kind of showing it off from all angles. I appreciated him doing that because it's kind of odd to see one uh, with that kind of nuchal hump on his head. They had a shrimp competition as well. A number of tanks set up. A lot of cool shrimp. Sometimes they're a little bit hard, a little bit hard to get on camera. So I didn't show a lot of them here. But there is a really cool shrimp competition if you're into that sort of thing. And of course, some people go to Aquashella because they're looking for fish. And I think it's one thing that sets them apart from other industry industry trade shows. A lot of bettas, but if you're not into bettas, they had a lot of other fish as well. But I just, I love some of these. Uh, they were really cool. And they were actually priced very reasonably, at least at Aquashella Chicago. Which was, which was nice. I saw a lot of people walking around with bettas. Sometimes they had two, three, four of them. And really cool, these fish were just looking awesome. As you can see here, a lot of different varieties. I actually think this is one that Kasha from, Create, from Creative Pet Keeping got. And we can see just the colors are amazing. But there, like I said, there wasn't just bettas for sale at Aqua Shell. There was a lot of different types of fish and I didn't have a chance to show them all because this video would be very long, but you can see some of the variety here, some, some of the nicer plecos, and we've got some angel fish that I thought were pretty interesting. So there were vendors selling fish in case you, you know, you see something like, oh wow, it'd be nice to actually take something home today after you're all excited about seeing fish related stuff. A lot of different plecos here. I would say there were, I mean, there were a number of freshwater vendors, a lot of salt water on the other side, and I didn't take the time to really show any of that. Uh, I assume that most of us are, would have certainly appreciate salt water, but it's not, maybe not our primary interest. And so it's certainly not mine. So I wanted to stay on the freshwater side, but keep in mind, there was an entire, a whole another side that was equally as big that was all salt water, salt water corals and fish and all kinds of stuff. And you can see here some pretty nice discus. Uh, they had these at the previous Aquashella in Chicago. It was nice to see them back because the colors were fantastic. Really enjoyed them. So that was Aquashella Chicago 2019 will be in Dallas, hopefully in the spring. If you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.